Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring the entire Nelson family. Here is Ozzie, who plays the part of Ozzie Nelson. And, of course, his lovely wife Harriet as Harriet Nelson. The older of the Nelson boys, David, appears as David Nelson. And his younger brother, the irrepressible Ricky, played by Ricky Nelson. The Nelson's next-door neighbor, Thorny, is played by Don DeFore. Come on, David, stop being such a coward. What are you talking about? Let me hit you once in a while. What, do you think I'm crazy or something? You're supposed to be my sparring partner, aren't you? So what? The sparring partner's supposed to let the other guy hit him. That's what the sparring partner's for. You're thinking of a punching bag. Come on, David. Let me just hit you one good sock on the chin. I will not. I want a chicken. Let me hit you in the stomach. Come on. You want a boxer, don't you? All I'm doing is blocking. I promised I wouldn't hit you. What more do you want? Just one short jab on the nose. I promise I won't draw blood. And the answer is no, and that's final. You want to be a big bully. Why can't we do something that I want for a change? Stop arguing, boys. And David, stop picking on Ricky. Let him have his way once in a while. <laughs> you kidding? You know what he wants me to do, Mom? No, but I'm sure it won't hurt anything. Oh, nothing but my face. He wants me to let him punch me in the nose. Well, what are you doing with those boxing gloves on anyway? We're boxing, Mom. Yeah, Ricky's going to box Iggy Schwartz at the Boy Scout rally tonight, and I was trying to give him a few pointers. But he's bouncing around like a chicken. Oh, yeah, you're just jealous because I'm so fast. Pour some water on me, Mom. Oh, don't tempt me. <laughs> What's this, the Los Gymnasium? It looks like it, doesn't it? Come on, let's park up around, Pop. Ah, you ought to be resting up for tonight. You get in the ring now, you won't be able to lift your gloves. Well, I don't know how I can lift them anyway. They look like a couple of pillows. Well, that's a good idea. Then the boys won't hurt themselves. I don't mind saying I don't like this whole idea. Oh, Harriet, they'll be fighting with these great big gloves, and I'm sure the scoutmaster will be careful they box boys their own age and weight. He used to box, didn't you, Pop? Well, not professionally, David, but I used to fool around a little at Boy Scout camps and stuff like that. Did you ever win? Oh, sure. As a matter of fact, our tent held the camp championship for two years in a row. No kidding. Yeah, got some good boys up there. One kid they called K.O. Kelly. Another kid named Jabber Jackson. What'd they used to call you, Pop? Uh, I don't recall. How about Nosedive Nelson? <laughs> I have a pretty good account of myself, Harriet. I bet you were the best one of them all, Pop. Well, I wouldn't say that, Ricky, but uh, I was a crowd pleaser. Just take a pretty good punch. Yeah, I was a pretty tough customer. Well, I can be a pretty tough customer, too, unless you clear all this stuff out of here. Come on, take it out the garage. Come on, give me a handy, Rick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll take the gloves for you. Thanks, Pop. Go, Steve. Come on, David, let me hit you one rabbit punch. <laughs> Boy, they sure are excited about that boxing tonight. Well, I wish I'd known about it before. I'd have never let them get into it. Oh, Harry's a good idea for the kids to know how to defend themselves. I don't want them to get too interested in it and get all banged up. Well, golly, you can get banged up in a lot of ways. You can slip and fall in the bathtub or you can walk into a door. Hey, where are you going? I want to take these out of the garage where they belong. Oh! Dear, are you all right? Head. Who oh, the heck let that door close like that, Harriet? Well, I guess the boys did. I hope you didn't walk into it just to prove your point. <laughs> How does it look? Look on the corner there. Well, here, take your hand away so I can see. Swelling up, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is. I better get some liverwurst for that eye. Liverwurst? You're supposed to use beefsteak. At these prices? Are you kidding? <laughs> I don't know, it might be my imagination, but it seems to me to be uh, swelling up a little there. Do you think so? Oh, goodness, yes. And, and uh, is it discoloring just a little bit? Looks like a sunset on the Taj Mahal. <laughs> I guess I must have banged into that door a little harder than I thought at first. Nobody's going to believe this, you know. Well, who left the boxing gloves here? Oh, oh, uh, uh, I did. I, I'm going to... Take them out to the garage. I thought you were going to do that a half hour ago. Uh, well, I was, but I, I uh, started out there a couple of times, and I uh, was thinking about this eye, and I, I sort of uh, rested up a little bit. I 
Bring a little cold water on, on the eye. I think it'll be all right. Uh, are, uh, are you going out toward the kitchen a little while? Mm-hmm. Why? Well, uh, not that I'm superstitious or anything, but uh, I wondered if you could uh, kind of uh, guide me uh, through the, the uh, doors <laughs> and the treacherous corners. You let me know when. I'll run into fears for you. Hey, Hans. Oh, oh, hi, Thorny. Hey, what are you hiding about? Not hiding. Holy smokes. Wow, is this a little early in the season for watermelon? What <laughs> a bump, isn't it? Yeah, gee, I think that eye's gonna turn black. Where'd you get it? Don't tell me you bumped into a door. Oh, well, you won't believe this, Thorny. Sure, I believe it. David's a pretty big boy. Uh, no, no. I actually did bump into a door. Oh, come on, Oz. <laughs> no, 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 I, I really mean it. Sounds like a stale excuse, I know, but it's the truth, Thorny. Oh, Oz, there's nothing to be ashamed of just because David hung one on you. It was probably just a lucky punch. Or uh, was it Ricky? No, 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 nobody hung one on me. I bumped into a door. Oh, sure. Is that why you were going to burn those boxing gloves in the incinerator? I wasn't going to burn any boxing gloves. Well, as a matter of fact, I was just in there sparring with my boy, Will. Kid looks pretty good, too. Oh, I wondered what you were all dressed up for. You were boxing, you say? No, I was just giving him a few pointers. Showing him the old Thornberry crouch. So you keep your body as low as possible. And when you get hit, you don't have so far to fall. <laughs> I don't mean to sound insulting, Thorny, but somehow I've just never thought of you as a boxer. Well, now that you mention it, I never thought of you as a boxer either. You always struck me more as a cocker spaniel type. <laughs> About a crouch, you were saying? Well, it's just a trick I picked up when I was a kid. You see, I uh, sort of crouch forward and then I sway back into position. <laughs> That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life. You're not supposed to have your right foot extended, you're supposed to have your left foot extended and your left arm extended for jabbing purposes. No, 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 Oz. This is the whole basis for my strategy confusion. Believe me, the only confusion will be when they pick you up off the ground. You actually mean that's your fighting position? Yeah. Looks pretty tricky, doesn't it? Well, Thorny, this is silly. Your right arm is hanging down there, absolutely useless, and you've got your left arm. Well, this looks like a traffic signal or something. Ah, oh, it's a decoy while my opponent is watching that. <laughs> what the heck are you doing, Thorny? You ought to have you in a cage or something. Gee, Oz, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were so close. Did I hurt you? Well, you grazed my lip here. A doggone punch of mine always catches a guy off guard. Off guard? Are you kidding? I didn't even have my guard up. I just showing you what's wrong with that ridiculous, clumsy stance of yours. Holy smoke, Oz, that lifts me in the bleed. Well, I think I bit it a little in the confusion there. Gee, I really hung on you. I didn't realize I had such a terrific punch. What are you talking about, Thorny? I wasn't ready, and you know it. Oh, now, don't get mad, Oz. I feel bad as it is. First David hangs one on you. David did not hang one on me. Well, Ricky then. First Ricky hangs Ricky one on you. Ricky didn't hang one on me either. I walked into a door. Well, anyway, I feel terrible. Sometimes I don't realize my own strength. Oh, Thorny, I practically had my back turned to you. It never hit me. Ah, you better put something on their lip. Let's begin to swell up. Nothing at all. Here, now, take your position again. I'll show you what's wrong. No, with no, no, you don't, Oz. I beat you fair and square, and I'm not going to do any more fighting today. You're talking about fighting. I want to show you what's wrong with that silly posture of yours. I'm sorry, Oz. My wife's calling me. Coming, Catherine. The thorny. Oz, just one thing. You don't have to go around the neighborhood telling everyone I beat you up. I'll do it myself. <laughs> Ozzy, for goodness sake, your lip is swollen up like a balloon. It's nothing at all. You ought to be more careful, dear. Which door did you bump into this time? The one in the garage? No, no, no. I, I didn't bump into any door. It was that clumsy Thornberry. And outside trying to show him a few things about boxing, and all of a sudden he stumbled into me when I wasn't looking. I'd better get an ice bag. You had no right to box with him. Harriet, we weren't boxing. In the first place, you should see the way he boxes. I can see perfectly, and it's swollen up like a balloon. <laughs> yes, yes. You said that a moment ago. Thorny had no right to hit you. Harriet, he didn't hit me. I tell you, we weren't boxing. My back was practically turned, and the man stumbled forward in that clumsy way of his and happened to 
hit me in the lip. He knows absolutely nothing about boxing. He's a menace to the neighborhood. Don't you think you'd better lie down for a while, dear? Oh, I'd, I'd feel fine, I tell you. Well, you look awful. i better get an ice bag. My eye bothers me more than my lip. Gee, what happened to you, Pop? Oh, uh, I bumped into a door, David. Hey, your lip's all puffed up. Oh, oh, that. Oh, it was just a, a little accident. See, I was fooling around with Mr. Thornberry outside, and he accidentally hit me. He must be a good boxer. Oh, no, 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 we weren't boxing. Matter of fact, Mr. Thornberry knows absolutely nothing about boxing. Gee, your lip's all swollen up like a balloon. Holy smokes, what happened to your lip, huh? Oh, it was nothing, it was just a little accident. Who hit you? Uh, Mr. Thornberry. Were you in Mr. Thornberry boxing? Oh, no, 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 Ricky. It was a, a lucky punch. See, we were outside, and Mr. Thornberry stumbled forward, and it's lucky I was there. He might have fallen on the ground and hurt himself. <laughs> You're a good boxer, aren't you, Pop? Well, I wouldn't say that. I used to be able to take care of myself pretty well. Our scoutmaster didn't know you used to be champion of the Boy Scouts. Who told him that? I did. Oh, Ricky, you shouldn't have done a thing like that. See, I told you. Will Thornberry was bragging about his father. Bragging in what way? Well, saying what, what a great boxer he is. Oh, well, that's ridiculous. I mean, Mr. Thornberry's a very nice man and, and a good neighbor, but he knows absolutely nothing about boxing. Don't you think you better put some on that lip, Pop? Oh, it, it's okay, Dave. Our scoutmaster said to ask you if you'd like to put on the gloves tonight. Put on the gloves? Yes, sir. You and Mr. Thornberry. He wants Mr. Thornberry and me to put on the gloves? Yes, sir. Mr. Roper thought it would be an added attraction. Uh, who, David? Mr. Roper, our scoutmaster. Oh, well, tell him thank you very much. It's very nice of him to think of me, but I'm sure Mr. Thornberry wouldn't want to do anything like that. In fact, you better not even mention it to him. I wouldn't want to embarrass the poor man. Oh, we already asked him, Pop. Uh, David, you, you shouldn't have done that. Uh, what excuse did he give? Oh, he said he'd be happy to do it. <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, the poor man doesn't even know how to hold his hands up or how to stand or, or anything. Come on, Pop, what do you say? Will you do it? Well... Oh, boy, I knew you would, Pop. I'll go for <laughs> Wait for me, David. Uh, here's your ice bag, dear. What's all the excitement? Uh, oh... Oh, well, uh, the boys have got some idea that they'd like to have Thorny and me put on a boxing exhibition over at the scout rally tonight. That is, isn't uh, unless you'd rather I wouldn't. Well, it's entirely up to you, dear. At least if you get hit by a person, you'll be able to fight back. <laughs> yes, I know, but Thorny is so clumsy, you know. I'd hate to have him hurt himself. And not only that, when a person doesn't know anything about boxing... His awkwardness makes the other person look ridiculous, too. Well, here, you better put this ice bag on your lips. Hey, you know, this might be a good idea. <laughs> Instead of my putting on this exhibition with Thorny, why don't Ricky and I put on sort of a, a comedy exhibition? You know, I put on a pair of long flannel underwear, and, and I put some padding in my stomach, and he keeps hitting me in the... the <laughs> I, I don't know, dear. I think the boys would rather see you box with Thorny. The thing, though, that the man is so clumsy, Harriet. So awkward, he knows absolutely nothing about boxing. You want to see the way he stands. He puts his right foot out like this, and then he has his left arm that he extends like a crowbar. And he hangs his right arm down by his side. And he moves this one up and down like that. And it looks like, like, like that. It's the silliest. It's funny nobody's ever thought of that before. <laughs> Ozzie and Harriet will be back in just a moment. Hot weather ahead. Quitting time for many a tired old refrigerator. And once it quits running, an old refrigerator shrinks in value to practically nothing at all. If you have an old refrigerator, trade it in now, before hot weather sets in, on a new Hot Point Superstore refrigerator like this. 
a terrific value at just $289.95, less the allowance on your old refrigerator. Yet, look at the work-saving features you get. Real deluxe features, such as these three handy door shelves, plus a full-width freezer that holds up to 38 pounds of frozen food and has Hot Point's ingenious new lift-to-cube ice trays. See? You can lift out a single cube at a time and not disturb the others. And say, you ever want to chill bottle drinks in a hurry? Look here. Room for almost half a case or a week's supply of meat. And speaking of room, look at the space this big Hot Point Superstore gives you for half-gallon milk bottles for perishable foods of all sizes and shapes, and for keeping fresh fruits and vegetables crisp, moist, and at their peak of garden flavor. So why take chances on your old refrigerator breaking down this summer? Why not trade it in now on a new Hot Point Superstore? Yours for this low price, minus your trade-in allowance at your nearby Hot Point dealers. Look for his name and address in your classified phone book. And always look to Hot Point for the finest first. Shadow box. You've certainly been getting the worst of it. Uh, oh, you mean my eye and my lip? Well, there are a couple of little accidents occurred this morning. Your eye and your lip look so full, and they must be terribly painful. Uh, well, Annie Lou, the boxing game is a tough one. You've got to expect to take it on the chin once in a while. You're so brave, Mr. Nelson. Well, not necessarily. I'm a fighter like this. I believe it's perfectly okay to take a few punches in order to hand them out. When did you have the fight? Oh, I'm not fighting until tonight. See, these are just little accidents. But as I say, boxing is a tough game. you got to expect it. Oh, I know. Where are you boxing tonight? Uh, over the Boy Scout rally. Oh, how wonderful, Mr. Nelson. Which scout are you fighting? <laughs> no, I'm not fighting a Boy Scout. My opponent is much more formidable than that. Who is it? Uh, Mr. Thornberry. Mr. Thornberry? Funny, but I never thought of him as a boxer. Is he very good? Well, no, actually, Emmy Lou, I hate to say this, but Mr. Thornberry will never make a good boxer. Well, why is that, Mr. Nelson? Well, for one thing, he has a completely unorthodox stance. See, he fights with his right foot extended, and there never has been a good fighter who's fought that way. You see, you're supposed to fight with your left hand extended and your left foot extended. He has the silliest... Uh, you be Mr. Thornberry. Oh, my goodness, do you think you'll mind? <laughs> Put your right foot out. That's it. Now he has his left arm right across there. Heavens, I can't see! Well, may, no, here's the way it was. It was uh, yes, that's the way it was, because I remember it looked like a traffic signal. His right arm hanging right by his side there. Oh, like this? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, that is Mr. Thornberry's boxing position. Can you believe it? Have you seen him? Uh, yes, he and I were fooling around a little this morning. Oh, so that's how you got the black eye. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, that's how I got the, the swollen lip. He must have hit you pretty hard, Mr. Nelson. Well, uh, actually, it was a very sneaky, cowardly punch. I wasn't looking. I was talking to the man. And, uh, be darned if I can figure out how he did it. His left hand was out like that. And his right hand was down there. Now, he was talking to me. And I was looking at his left hand, I remember. I, I can't figure out how he could have possibly hit me in fr from this position. You mean like this? Oh, 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 Hit me in the nose. Oh, dear, I must have a fleeing. Uh, now, you see what I mean? How could any man ever be a good boxer with a ridiculous, clumsy stance like that? Oh, careful, Mr. Nelson. It's dripping all over your tie. Yeah. <laughs> I'll probably have the only nose paid a necktie in town. <laughs> you want to borrow my handkerchief? No, I think I have one right here. Oh, oh it's still bleeding, Mr. Nelson. Maybe you'd better go in and lie down a little while. You look kind of beat up. Oh, no, I'll be... What was that? What? I thought I heard a bell. <laughs> uh, I guess we just... Uh, 
I think I will go and lie down a while, Emmy Lou. It's always good to rest up before a fight. Goodbye, Mr. Nelson. Bye, Emmy Lou. I'll see you. Hi, do you know where the evening paper is? Mm Mm-hmm. It's right over here on the table. For goodness sakes, what happened to your nose? It's all swollen up. <laughs> well, don't get excited about these little things. I just fooling around outside. There was a, a lucky punch. Well, Thorny does all this to you before the fight. What is he going to do tonight? <laughs> Thorny, for goodness sakes, Harry, that's a laugh. You must have a fine idea of my boxing ability. You don't think Thorny could do a thing like this to me, do you? Well, who did do it? The, uh, uh, Emmy Lou. <laughs> Well, I told you it was a lucky punch, Harriet. She and I were fooling around out... Not exactly fooling around. I mean, (laughs) I was showing her that ridiculous, clumsy stance of Thorny's. And all of a sudden, somehow, she hit me the the same way. It was was a lucky punch. I wasn't even ready. You look like you're coming home from a fight instead of going to one. (laughs) Guess this is my lucky day. Maybe it'll rain tonight and they'll call the whole thing off. Harry, you act as if you think I can't beat Thorny. I'm positive I can beat him. Just not sure. If you ask me, I think the smart thing to do would be to chicken out. Chicken out? Harry, I've never chickened out of anything yet, and I'm not going to start in now. All right, never mind, dear. You'll feel better after dinner. What are we having for dinner? Your favorite meal. Oh. Uh, what is that? Chicken. <laughs> Please. Come in, Thorny. Oh, hi, Thorny. Holy smoke, Oz. What happened to you? Oh, boy, that punch I gave you sure must have covered a lot of territory. Hiya, uh, Thorny. How about staying for dinner? No, thanks, Harry. Just finished. However, I could be talked into a small portion of dessert. All right, I'll take you up on that. Dessert? What about the fight? Oh, well, if I'm going to have to fight for it, never mind. <laughs> How about a cigar? Oh, no, you shouldn't smoke, Thorny. For goodness sakes, think what it'll do to your wind. You'll get into the ring tonight and you won't be able to... Yeah, here, Thorny. When you finish with that one, have one of mine. <laughs> hey, oh, Thorny, I'm not going to take advantage of you. Don't you realize what a big, heavy dinner and that smoking is going to do to your speed? Well, who needs speed? Well, when you get into the ring tonight, you want to move around a little. Oh, not me. I'm going to take it easy. I don't have to move around. <laughs> well, you're pretty darn confident. You're liable to run into a little trouble. Ah, I don't think so. What's difficult about putting on the boys' gloves with them? Putting on the boys' gloves? Hey, wait a minute. Maybe Ricky forgot to tell you. We're supposed to go over and put on the gloves tonight. You know, sort of act as seconds for the boys. Oh, yeah, he did mention it. Sure, Oz, it'll be a lot of fun. You can sort of give them pointers on boxing and... Well, I'm not so sure your face is going to inspire confidence, though. (laughs) We're seconds tonight, you say? Yeah. And I can't understand why they asked me. I've never boxed before in my life. Are you kidding? Oh, you big phony Oz, you ought to know that. You had to show me how to stand and how to use my hands right. Wait a minute. Is this right? No, 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 wait a minute. If you're going to start that again, I'll watch you from the dining room. (laughs) Oz, I'm really sorry about it. But, of course, you know, if you'd have been ready... Oh, well, sure, if I'd have been ready, I, I would... You sure you've never boxed before in your life? Honest, Oz. Never had the gloves on in my life. <laughs> this is really a joke on Harriet. <laughs> <laughs> well, somehow she got the ridiculous idea that you and I were going to box each other tonight. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because naturally I sort of went along with the gag. <laughs> You must have misunderstood, Ricky. <laughs> Evidently. See? Oh, yes, of course. You see, Ricky came in and he said we were supposed to put on the gloves, you and I, meaning we were supposed to act as seconds and put the gloves on the boys. Harriet thought that we were going to put the gloves on and fight each other. <laughs> this is marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> She's right. I think I'll go tell her. Oh, boy. Harriet? Women, women never get things straight. Never. Uh, Harriet? <laughs> She's right out in the kitchen. I'll be right back, Tony. 
Harriet, retire to a neutral corner. Oh, dear, I'm sorry. I was on the other side in the kitchen, and, and you were on the way. I'm... Oh, that's all right, Harry. I'm okay. Are you sure? Oh, yes, I'm fine. Uh, Harriet. Yes, dear? I know when I'm licked. Throw in the dish towel. <laughs> Ozzy and Harriet will be back in just a moment. It's as easy as taking a book from the shelf to find just what you want in Hot Point's new upright model food freezer. Why, even food at the back puts itself in fingertip reach. You can freeze and store up to 368 pounds in this big polar pantry. Extra convenient because it's designed to save space in your kitchen or utility room. For you who prefer chest-type freezers, Hot Point offers four popular sizes. Eight, ten, fifteen, and twenty-three cubic feet. All, like this big fifteen cubic foot model, have counterbalanced lids for easy opening. So cut food costs, save time, work, and trips to the store with an upright or chest type hot point food freezer. Reasonably priced with easy budget terms at your nearby hot point dealer's store. <laughs> I just want to finish this chapter. That's okay. Go ahead. You keep reading. Is your lip bothering you? No, no. I think most of the swelling has gone down. You're sure the boys didn't get hurt tonight? No, no, no. All the kids had a wonderful time. They had those big gloves on, you know. In fact, they've decided to have another big rally next month. You mean to say they're going to have boxing every month? Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm getting excited. Oh, no, not boxing. They're going to have different entertainment each month. Not boxing all the time. Certainly hope not. They'll have all the kids in the neighborhood punch drunk. What are they going to have next month? Uh, uh wrestling. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, a lot of fun. Did I ever tell you I did quite a bit of wrestling myself up at scout camp when I was a kid? Ozzy. No, 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 I, I did, really. <laughs> Come on, gorgeous. Close your other eye and let's go to sleep. <laughs> Next week, The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet will be brought to you by prophylactic toothbrushes, Listerine toothpaste, and Listerine, the most widely used antiseptic in the world. Part of Emmy Lou was played by Janet Waldo. Don't forget that a completely different episode of The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet is heard every Friday night on radio. Consult your newspaper for time and radio stations. <laughs>